Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and today we have another project. This is going to be a braze and machine repair. This component we have is only half of the project that actually originally came over here, and they had. Uh, there's another section that slides over here, and this is a disc, uh, like a clutch disc, and the other section that came in here had a bevel gear, and they wanted some gear teeth work done on it. Um, I do not have the equipment here to do helical bevel and those kind of gears so you know we we recommended uh, Worcester gear um, to be contacted and uh, be able to redo those those gear teeth there um, but I was able to go ahead and take this part of the job and <clears throat> let me roll this around here on this side here you can see some shiny surfaces out here right there and right in the center well this center here is actually a thrust area uh, and that holds the uh, position of the pack itself and that was wearing right there and as that thrust wore the whole thing shifted in and then these are the next contact points whether they're nuts, bolts, or whatever on part of the rest of the case or, or what what this actually goes on. And uh, sometimes, you know, I, I, I can see the wear and I can see the the uh, the fix that's needed. And I don't necessarily need to know the rest of the, the realm of their project because I'm just focusing on what my project is and it's to repair that, that surface. I, I, I do recognize a lot of things in here, especially in the... Uh, the older um, uh, HBMs and stuff like that. There was a lot of spline shafts that drove uh, 90 degree uh, gears for the gear training and so on. And this pack here, I can recognize that there's six points here within the threads, and this is this is an adjustment setting. So there's a lot of common things that I recognize on this for the error of machinery that this goes to. So. This is going to be fun. We're going to we're going to set this up in the lathe first, and we're going to skim this severely worn area right here. We'll get you a, a, in here close to look at this, and we're gonna we're gonna come in here and undercut this and remove anything that might be rubbed into it. This is this is galling, uh, where one one metal is is rubbing into another metal, and it, and the friction causes the two to mix together. And what I want to do is because we're going to build this up with braze and I want to get in there and first off create enough braze buildup to be substantial like a bushing or a washer surface um, and, and I want to rid of anything that might be mixed in there that once I get started with my brazing um, process that I don't have something that's going to be hard or mixed in there with and, and cause a problem with my bonding process on this and also not raising any of that material up or floating it to the top of the braze or somewhere in there and then be sitting in the surface that I'm going to machine for the the thrust itself all right so let's go ahead and we got to get our lathe ready for this because We've we've measured our overall length here and our diameter, and with our new four jaw in the closing lathe, we are going to be able to put this in. Now we're going to have to pull the gap, and we're going to have to run some um, aluminum on our jaw so we don't scratch into this or compress jaw marks or teeth marks into this area right here because this is a bushing and guide for the gear cluster that goes over this and then there's disc or whatever fits in here and these these round diameters here are what locate all of these components in between so let's let's go ahead and get over to the closing and start preparing that for this project okay before i i get started in here let's go ahead and move our tool bit back over here where I store those and I want to I want to thank everybody for jumping in and making comments on uh, 
mounting the four jaw video and all the idea and inputs that everybody put into this and yes I will go ahead and I'll take a torque wrench and I'll actually torque those four bolts when I'm final if, if we had a half a thousand run out or discrepancy on this face from side to side and I pulled it off put it on pull it off pull, put it on and repeatedly I even mark it with a sharpie before I pull it off and before I put it back on that position there even after I torque those bolts then we know that if we wanted to make this a hundred percent perfect we would grind that surface right in here with a tool post grinder uh, this radius right here I'll kiss that with a tool bit eventually and this outside right here now you notice that when we were reading that outside diameter it wasn't a really smooth sweep from zero to four okay it was like zero on up to like two hold like two for three quarter you know not three quarters but a third of the way around and then it would come up to four and then it would go back down so there's irregularly uh, irregular diameter difference on this outside of this chuck which a tool post grinder right on on the outside would take care of that now the t-nut slots i'm really glad that this has t-nut slots and a lot of you said hey why didn't we cut t-nut slots in the old chuck the old chuck originally when it was sitting in the office one um i think it, I think it was Bill at Boston Machinery. Uh, sorry if I got his name wrong. Um, and, I, and I talked to him and I'm signing, signing my deal on this lathe here at the office. And so I was saying, okay, he said the three jaw, and we're talking about the tracer attachment and all the parts and stuff that go with it. And right there on the floor holding the door open and that's, now I understand that it was, it was just a good door stop. Um, I said, what about that four jaw? I'd throw that in. And he, he didn't hesitate at all, you know. But he did say, that's a piece of junk. And those jaws that are in it didn't come with that chuck. So it was a mismatched set to start with, okay. Um, and also the original design of, of the chuck doesn't have the build up on the casting on and inside the back side of the casting they build up an area where it, it gives you more material around the the t-nut slots all right now i checked my t-nuts over there and i can i do have a set of three eighths that pop into there and the center of it is like right here okay so that's about the center of your hold for your stud um i will go ahead and get a t i, I have a t-nut slot cutter but I don't know if it's exactly the size I need for this. If not, I will procure one and I will set this jaw up and we'll go ahead and we're going to bring this in. We could bring this, that, that T-nut slot in another three quarters of an inch and I'd go ahead and modify it so that I could take my half inch studs. So if, if I was able to increase down to there where it'd be a safe zone where I'm not into this area right here, I could gain almost an inch on the radius of grabbing and that would make nice to have you know the foot or support for your toe clamp or what you're needing to clamp in there it would make it more universal and more practical so i plan i plan on doing something like that but i have i have <laughs> i have the orient express i'm going to call it that because this is a this is this come across from the orient and and the crazy route it took to get here to my shop i just orient express what a, a better name for this chuck here um I, and i'll i'll make up my own label to put in here when i get all done and i actually sign off on this chuck 100 percent. i am extremely happy with it and i mean that the day i we did this i automatically got in and i had like four jobs that i played around with this and it was one of the jobs was actually taking out one part and putting in another part and to have have a four jaw, remove two jaws and tighten back two jaws on a part that you're running a bunch of or a couple on and have it repeat in the setup is just just really really exciting all right so i just wanted to really thank you guys and just kind of touching bases that we'll be getting and we'll, we'll finish some details on this on this chuck to really make it what we really are totally going to be happy with 
but it, it's already making a smile on my face as it is. All right, let's get in here and pull this gap, and uh, let's, let's, we got to get that in there to prep up the area for brazing, and then we'll go braze it, and then after it cools down, uh, we'll still have the gap out, and, and we'll leave it set up so that we can bring it back in and do the finishing uh, machining on it. We've got all of our wrenches here. This is the Allen for the, the two uprights, and... This one here under the chuck, I could have. Now I have to get my tapper. This tapper does come in handy in case uh, you have to like just reach in an area and break things loose and not hit your hands. Also, I wanted to just make a note here while I was thinking about it. I've been adjusting my microphone uh, level of pickup there, trying to um, control um, being able to hear the noises in the shop, the machines, and also trying to eliminate a little bit of you listening to me breathe because this, the mic is just that sensitive. we got the fan over there on the wood stove it's kind of going in the background and every once in a while you could probably hear the air compressor kick on throughout the video a uh, little feedback on that kind of noise is nice to know it's a little easier when the three jaws in here and you don't you're not so tight and cramped but it's nice that the gap will still slide out of this opening with the uh, four jaw. My other one, it, the other chuck was quarter inch larger on the diameter, and uh, and I was able to do it with that. So this one here is not any different in that respect. Okay, we just palm it, we break it loose. It it, it like floats on oil. It's like really easy to move around once you break it and then you got to break the suction loose and then you can bring it up and out of here like that all right now we're nice and open in this area here and we'll go ahead and we'll lay a blanket across here just so we don't you know hit that area with our object while we're sticking it in here I have four aluminum shims already cut out and uh, we'll be placing those along here. I don't think I'm going to use uh, muggy shit to hold them in there. Um, I, I may put a dab. I'm, I'm going to see how easy it is to hold them in there. If I have a problem maintaining them uh, and, and uh, them slipping out on me, I will put some in there. Okay, I just went on a monkey shit hunt and I found uh, my new supply in fact i reached up on the uh the k and t and i threw out my old piece there so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna cut a piece of break a piece or get a piece off of this i think i'm gonna cut it with my scissors all right i just tried fighting this thing in in here and it's too hard to hold the aluminum pieces in here so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna apply a little monkey shit here okay just roll a couple of little turds like that and uh, get it down in there and get your aluminum in here now later on I will go ahead and draw out a design uh, I'll because I have the plasma cam in there and I have a uh, a break finger break and stuff like that so I can I can make a nice little set that will fold over and get on these jaws I just don't have that time to sit down and do that right now so this is what I did where I was in a jam and needed to, needed to take care of business. All right. I'll do the same thing for these other three jaws here. Okay. We're done there. And just gently. That's why I put the blanket down here so I could set it on the ways here. Okay, we're going to slide it in here first. And... Get it in here and then set it on those two jaws. 
I'm going to take our wrench here. We'll crank in these two jaws. I'm going to re I'm going to make a new wrench here. One, this is too loose in, in here. Okay? This length is good except for it's about an inch too long. All you need is enough for your jaw to come out underneath your handles. Um, so I will be playing with this. Um, all right. Now, we're, we're going to have to spin this a little bit here. We're going to keep an eye on this. To the ways we need to come out a little bit on this top side here uh, because these there's three dogs back here and there's four jaws so you have a slight bit of interference on one jaw to to one of those and so we have to let it stick out past the end of the jaws I'll give you a, a picture of that when I get it set I'm just rolling it and I'm squishing the uh, monkey shit into the teeth and making sure that the aluminum is being held in there and square looks good so far I got one I gotta push over with a screwdriver right here I just want to make sure that they stay they stay in there go yeah <laughs> I had to laugh because I had to go in and help Vanessa put Shanann into the uh, the kitty cage to go to the vet this is his very first trip to the vet we've we've always had a, a home home stop vet and uh, so anyhow um, he was nice nice until about his head was into that cage and then it was uh, it was all a different story after that. Um, okay, I, I got air clearance between that one jaw back here and the four jaw here. And I'm kind of like spinning this over by hand here. One jaw is still just a little bit loose. I can... I can hear it. All right, um, so now what we need to do is we need to put an indicator here that's going to run our peripheral, and then we're going to reach around the back side here, and we're going to put an indicator on the back of this clutch face here, and that's going to give us our alignment, and then after that, then we'll be able to come in here and, and machine this, and that'll be the two same surfaces that we'll redial to machine the finish off the top after our braze. All right, can you see me now? <laughs> all right, I, uh, I, I got, uh, let me see, I don't know if I'll, I'll, all right, I guess you got a good view there. And, of course, this is my fine adjustment here. And I went ahead and I got my uh, reach-in uh, extension here, 90-degree extension to fit on this indicator here. The stair, it's on my uh, compound and uh, tool post and comes on back here and touches this surface right here. Um, it was more than one jaw loose. I when I was interrupted when Vanessa came in to put the cat in there, I uh, I, I I was in between actually doing the first tensioning on here. Back here we're 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 clear. We have at least an eighth of an inch clearance between any one of those and and one of the jaws. So we got plenty of room to move this. All right, it looks like we got about 30, 35, somewhere around in there, and down here on the peripheral. We're about 160 or so. Hundred sixty-six. Okay. Um, okay. So we're gonna work a combination of it. Okay. Now we're 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 out more in our peripheral than we are in our face. So let's just work. work let's work on getting that in first. Now this is where a long reach is kind of nice because I'm outside my indicators over here if I happen to choose here. And that's, I'm pretty much straight in line with the indicator there. All right, now first off I look at, I look at the high, okay, and I, and I go ahead and I tension up slightly on that. 
um, just because that I'm going to rely on releasing the tension on the low side. This is, you know, kind of how I approach dialing it in. Uh, you always have to maintain your other tension on your other two jaws so that you just don't totally lose it. Um, here again, just double checking. Now we're moving in between two jaws, so then you start. You got to start thinking. You got to start thinking both of them at the same time, and. You don't have to rotate it all the way around. You know which two you're running, so you know you're going to go slight on them. So you just go ahead and back off enough, but not enough to really go ahead and lose it. And then you can catch up a little bit on the spring in there. And slowly you get it on down there. All right, so right now we're, we're roughly about six or eight. And this actually come in a little little closer here as well now let's go ahead and let's you know this is the both of them are dropping so let's continue on let's go ahead and try to take that last that last little 10 out of there let's go ahead and bring let's bring this indicator up here so I can see it a little bit easier here and uh, you know we can sometimes I curse these little ex fine adjustments and sometimes they come in handy Okay, there was uh, there's a high, there's a low. Okay, back to the high again. Just make sure our tension's good. Let me switch it around a little bit here. There's our low. Now we don't know if that hole. We haven't mic'd that hole, so we don't know if that hole is true. Also, but the indicator is kind of sweeping its path slowly from one side to the other it might have one little flat area like right there and then all of a sudden then it goes see how that indicator acts it kind of lets you know that it's not exactly a round hole in case what you do in that case is you just four point it and you put your jaws exactly straight across from the indicator and you pick that point like right there is like eight and then there's like seven there's like nine and there's like nine okay so four point you're within one thousandths all right let's look at this one here now we're gonna have to boot it or tap it in and out to get the the face and we'll go ahead and we're gonna grab our lead lead hammer <clears throat> and these are really handy to have And you can tap in or you can tap out depending on which way you want to go you're high and low okay if I wanted to tap in I'd tap it on the low now tapping I usually bring it up here where I got a little room and also I hold my indicator off of here and then I remember where it's at and if I'm not making any progress then I make another attempt here's uh, here's your here's the high and I'm not really moving anything. You know I have I have real long aluminums in there and that that gives you equal pressure and sometimes the 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 hold that you have there is going to keep you from pitching it because if you actually pitch this a couple thousandths this way here you're actually moving that center piece so you're going to be wanting to rock on the jaw. Actually I'm uh, high there low there this is in between two jaws there so I could possibly get a little bit out of it now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go get a screw jack I like to use a screw jack off of the face and against the back there and then I can stick the screw jack in there and adjust it and uh, lots of times I can get it to come out and hold that that face where I want it okay I got two different size screw jacks uh, that are handy to use the big one might be what's needed for this one. Okay, there's our low right there. Alright, um, I think that's seven eighths on that. Let's see if I remember right. Yep, close enough. Okay. And and it's going away. So 
<clears throat> we're going to go to the high spot. We were thinking about it reverse. Probably because we're running at the mouth at the same time. Anyway. All right. There's a little bit of up and down sweeping as well where it's not exactly going smooth. So that's saying that there's a little bit of warpage in the face. And there again, if we four point it, we'll go zero on that jaw. That one's plus one. That one's minus two. That's zero. And we got two, two at 90 that are zero. And then we got, we got a plus one and a minus two. Okay, we're gonna go back to our peripheral. And that's minus, and here's the plus side. And we're all, we always check first on the plus side because we wanna, we wanna see if just taking a little bit of attention will help the situation instead of breaking something loose and then losing it. And of course, this, we're, we're just trying to get this dialed in one to know that how close we can dial it in, how smooth and round our surfaces are, and to go ahead and make our first cut of just roughing off that dimension down there. Now we're not going to change the bore, the bushing, or anything else on this, just the thrust side. So we can have a little bit of air and this thrust is not going to make a difference, but the closer we get it, the closer it's going to be as far as its contact. Okay, I'm going to go back to my screw jack or add another one. Let's see. Okay, we're zero plus one minus three minus one. All right. Let's, let's, uh, we're going to find our other screw. We know how we have to, we have to go out to uh, our ENCO saw because that's where our other screw jack's at. Okay. We found it. And it was out there. We use it to level out our saw out there. We should be doing something else so we can always have this uh, screw jack uh, available. Okay, I'm going to take this other high spot right here and set the other screw jack right in here. It really needs to go in here. If it takes a three point, it takes a three point here. Well, that one change there made the whole thing within two thousands there. What do we got on the peripheral? We're like within two there, but it's like there again. It's almost rides on that center one more than it does the dip high and low. Um, there's the low. There's the high.
All right, equalize all of our tensions here now. I don't think one is any stronger than the other. Okay. I can't physically pull those out. We're going to call that our zero. This is where we're going to go ahead and decide to cut the material before we braise. So let's prep it there. And this is what we'll expect when we come back and redial it in to get our part running as true as we can to face that off. All right, now we're going to take a depth mic right here and we're going to check that. Okay, we found our depth mic and uh, I'm just putting I'm putting one one piece. This looks like it had a little wear on it and this right here looks like it hasn't and there's a little tiny bit of a burr on there. All right, we're looking at uh, 40 39 to 40 39 to 40 thousandths above that surface right here all right let's uh, back off all of our indicators and uh, let's get a tool po uh, tool bit in here and we're gonna come in here and skim this prep it for the brazing so uh, some of you guys aren't panicking okay we're gonna we're gonna take a this is real duct tape made by duck. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a wrap around this outside here. Okay, uh, on all those screw jacks back there, just so, just so I don't have to go chase them. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay down in the bottom of the gap where my gap actually sits. I'm gonna lay a rag folded up so nothing if they do fly out if they get it if they escape that that duct tape they don't put a, a drop ding into that surface there as well now I'm not gonna spin this real fast That looks really good. Even watching that spline down in there rotate and spin looks dynamite. <clears throat> okay, just to see how far we're worn out down in here, I'm going to touch a little bit on this surface here. I will be skimming this, the top surface. I'll be skimming all the way out to that outer lip and all the way to the inner where that radius or chamfer is. All right, we set zero with our travel dial here just so. And we're almost ready to remove and replace this travel dial because it's starting to fail on us. So, okay, 40 thousandths. So it's almost worn as much as it, 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 it's supposed to be raised above that. Okay, here we go again. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to lay down a rag. So I'm gonna catch catch most of this cast debris here. This is ductile iron, and that's why we're brazing it versus uh, uh, welding it. This is the depth that I originally came in and touched. I'm just going back and forth. I went all the way out to that one edge, and I'm going to go in. Now I'm going to... I'm going to take this in. I'm going to be building it all back up with braid. I'm going to take it about right to there. Now I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in 20,000. So that's going to that's going to make my whole build up from the bottom